Hello, my name's Bruce Fumi. It's the 5th of April. I'm standing in Broad Street in front of the Market Cross in Stirling. And welcome to today's episode of This Day in Scottish History. Now, if I asked you what was the last battle on Scottish soil, you might say Culloden in 1746. Not quite. See, I want to tell you about a battle that didn't have romantic Highlanders and would never have been had the Outlander uh, series written about them. But it does have an impact on us today. Let me give you a bit of background to the post culloden world. In the 1770s, across the Atlantic, Britain had been defeated by the Americans in the fight for independence and democracy. In the 1780s, across the Channel, the French had staged a revolution so that their country would be run by the people rather than unelected nobility. In the 1790s, Thomas Paine had published his radical book, The Rights of Man. In Ayrshire, a peasant farm boy whose dad could only afford one summer's formal schooling managed to get an informal education. He would go on to be proclaimed as our national bard and the greatest ever Scot. In the meantime, Robert Burns read Thomas Paine's book and sent cannon to France to aid with their people's revolutionary struggle. Dangerous activities for an excise man. Now there's no way that the British state wanted ideas of liberty, equality and fraternity coming here. It would lead to chaos, anarchy, for God's sake, it could lead to Jeremy Corbyn. The British state spent huge amounts of money paying first other countries and then fighting themselves against Napoleon. They spent so much money that to pay for the Napoleonic Wars, the British government had to invent a new form of taxation. Income tax. Now, it turns out, after the war, they kept it. Must have been popular. But that's not the only thing that happened after the Napoleonic War. Parliamentary landowners introduced the Corn Laws, which inflated food prices. Returning veterans had no jobs to come back to, there was recession, the Industrial Revolution meant that workers were being replaced by machines. Oh, and they had no right to vote. It was a recipe for a stern Facebook post. Various radical groups sprung up, which led to the Cato Street Conspiracy and the Peterloo Massacre in England. We don't have time. If you're English, use Google. The point is that this was a post-Union world, and there was a UK-wide sense of unrest and resentment. But of course, Scotland was special. Surprise! The thing is that here in Scotland, since the 1560s, Presbyterian congregations had elected their ministers and elders, and these were the people who would organise and provide for the community. Scots were used to the ideas of democracy, and it was these ideas of Presbyterian Scots that filtered through into the American Declaration of Independence. But in the world's first fully literate society, people could read but only four in every thousand was allowed to vote. Four in every thousand. Think about that. This means that on a Saturday afternoon in a packed Ibrox stadium, 50,000 of them wouldn't be allowed to vote. But there were disadvantages as well. Keep your sash on. I made fun of Berwick Rangers last week. As this day in Scottish history approached, there were extremists, radicals, who had crazy ideas that every man should get to vote. Not yet, ladies, wait for it, wait for it. Some thought that their only recourse was armed insurrection. A strike was called, and 60,000, mainly weavers, came out. But there was more going on than met the eye. You see, British government spies had infiltrated radical groups. The police commander in Glasgow arrested the entire 28-man Radical Central Committee. And then before the general public had time to find out or work out what had happened, the government organised agents provocateurs who called for a rising and the proclamation of the provisional government on the 1st of April. April Fool! As soon as they made a move, many radicals were arrested. Rumours were spread about that there was aid coming from France, that the English radicals had risen up at the same time, that the government was in chaos. Of course, it was the government who were fomenting the chaos in the first place. 
The key agent provocateur was called John King. And on instructions from the Home Secretary, King managed to persuade some radicals under the leadership of an army veteran, John Beard, in action. And on the 4th of April, just before midnight, King arrived at John Beard's lodging. Beard had been elected commander of the Condorra insurgents. King told them that he had orders from the Central Committee. Baird was to take his men and join with a huge contingent in an attack on the Carn Ironworks near Falkirk. Now this was the largest ironworks in Europe and it was the source of all the main artillery pieces for the British Army and Navy. Now, there was no huge contingent on the way. At around 5am this day in 1820, they did meet up with 25 men who'd come from Glasgow, also in the instructions of John King. Along with Beard's men, that made 35 brave souls. Now, King obviously didn't show up, but the rest headed off, only to be ambushed near Bonnie Bridge by a troop of the 10 Hussars and the Stirlingshire Yeomanry. People in Bonnie Bridge still say that the government troops arrived by flying saucer. Is that gag too local? Our civilians and veterans fought a valiant but inevitably fruitless fight. Beard, along with a co-conspirator, was hanged and beheaded here at the Market Cross in Broad Street in Stirling. I'm told it was the last ever beheading in the UK. Many more were transported and government went back to normal. At least for a while. Two years later, George IV visited Scotland, wore a kilt, the Highland dress was rehabilitated and everyone forgot about the British government's deceit. It took a hundred years and another great war on the European mainland before universal suffrage. But please remember and find out a bit more about the Scottish insurrection of 1820 and the Battle of Bonnie Muir fought on this day in Scottish history. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this clip. If you have, please like and share the clip. Like and share the Facebook page, Scotland History Tours. Better still, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Scotland History Tours. I'm in Dochus Gumbi, Lama Alive. Cheerio and Drasta.